man responsible for the blast, Anthony Warner, mailed a package to someone in Murfreesboro just days before the bombing. That man immediately turned it over to the FBI. Investigative reporter Ben Hall shares exclusive details about what was inside. This nondescript package was postmarked December 23rd, two days before the bombing. It had no return address, but the rambling pages inside left no doubt who it was from. Hey dude, you will never believe what I found in the park, reads a cover letter to one of Warner's longtime friends. It was signed by Julio, a name Warner's friends say he often used when sending them emails. It continued, the knowledge I have gained is immeasurable. I now understand everything, and I mean everything, from who, what we really are, to what the known universe really is. The letter urged the friend to watch some internet videos he included on two Samsung thumb drives. On another page, Warner wrote about 9-11 conspiracy theories, ending with the statement that the moon landing and 9-11 have so many anomalies they are hard to count. Warner later wrote that September 2011 was supposed to be the end game for the planet because that's when he says aliens and UFOs began launching attacks on Earth. He believed the media was covering up those attacks. But Warner's writings grow even more bizarre. At one point, he writes to his friend about reptilians and lizard people that he believed control Earth and had tweaked human DNA. Warner wrote, they put a switch into the human brain so they could walk among us and appear human. When they were the first daughters, and we all want Paris Hilton coverage over everything in our stupid world now, all we ever got to know about them were the bad moments that they had. But you know what? You know? It's funny. I was thinking of their bad moments. They did what any other girl. I went to college. Yeah. I was 20. Yeah, you played drinking games. Yeah, but you're the president. Daughter, so everyone you, you had a, I don't think they were wildly crazy. No, no. What I was, what my point is they had, she had an illegal ID card, underage card. Don't we all? Yeah. What I'm saying is all we knew about them was that. that. Of we, course. We knew five minutes out of their lives. They were doing really good things, but nobody wants to focus on that stuff because it's boring. Being God as normal as you can. Doing but now, yeah. work is, is no, no, no. Back then, boring. I'm saying. Back yeah. then, no, they were no, probably doing then. really yeah. good things, yeah. but nobody cared. Well, they were college kids back then. We, have, we actually have uh, so somebody with us. So many workers are losing their jobs. Okay, yes. I'm done now. We can go to Jenna. Uh, Jenna Bush <laughs> is awaiting us right now. Sorry, Jenna. It's okay. Jenna knows all about these primaries and things. First twin daughter, or whatever we call Jenna. First of all, Jenna. You, you have written a book called Anna. You've been doing the press thing. You've been doing interview after interview after yes. interview. Yes. How do you feel? Are there any surprises for you in this whole thing that you're doing? No, I mean, it's been really great. I'm, I'm traveling to different high schools throughout the United States and talking with teenagers and students about Anna and, and the other kids I met in Latin America. And so far, it's been Really inspiring and 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 not unpleasant. I mean, the, well, the, we'll change all that. No, now. we're not going to change all. Don't change it, please. We, we will right. not change okay. it. We will not. She obviously people, hasn't seen the show. People have been nice, and they're not attacking your dad or his policies to you. Yeah, no. I mean, everybody realizes that this is about honest story and what I've learned in Latin America. Yeah. Now, what you, did you learn? It, well, I met with my job. I worked for UNICEF, which is an amazing organization that works in over 150 countries. And my job was to meet with teenagers who were living in exclusion, who were living in um, extreme poverty or living with HIV and write their stories, listen to their stories and write them for UNICEF. And so, I mean, I obviously learned so much from these kids. I learned from Anna in particular, who has lived an extremely difficult life. I learned um, to live each day to its fullest. Uh, excuse me, Jenny, there's a word you used earlier in the interview about exclusion. Can you explain what that yes. is? Well, a lot of the kids I met, I mean, exclusion is a broad term, obviously, but the kids I met were living in extreme poverty. They didn't have access to medical care or education, schooling. Um, they were living with HIV. And, and so um, they were living uh, outside of, of um, society's embrace. Mm -hmm. and I think doing, I'm sorry, okay. doing any kind of missionary work, I think, really changes a person. And you and your sister had a little bit, I mean, you guys weren't Paris Hilton, but you had a little bit of a <laughs> reputation Jeez. as party girls. Do you think this changed you? Well, no. I mean, I think people had that image of us because they didn't know really what we were up to because we wanted to keep private. But of course, you know, so it didn't change my personality necessarily. But I taught for two years after um, the University of Texas, after graduating, and then went on to Latin America and, and um, you know, of course, I've grown up. It's been seven years since people <laughs> had that image of me. Um, but yeah, I mean, listening to their stories was it was incredible. And Je it did Jenna, when me. you see this, when you not only listen to their stories, but you get involved and you write about it mm -hmm. as well, 
Does it change how you look, you're thinking about how government should run in the United States and elsewhere to help these people? Why should these people be in these situations? Yeah, I mean, I think the United States government does try to help. I went to Africa this this summer um, with my mom, and I met a lot of um, people who's who are getting assistance from the United States government and, and um, to help them get the medicine they need to stay to stay healthy. But um, definitely, and I think the key is education. And um, for instance, with Anna, Anna's mother didn't have the education to know what to do to keep her baby Anna safe. So Anna inherited HIV from her mom, but. Anna, with education in Latin America, has taken the proper ARVs, and her baby, Beatrice, is most likely HIV negative. So there wow. is a positive light to all of this. Does it ever make you feel like you, not just you in particular, but you are too privileged in this world? Well, um, you know, I, I know I'm very fortunate, and I have, um, but I, I think that we can all give back in some ways. Mm -hmm. And I hope that I'm doing that by teaching and, and by writing this book. I know you and your mom are writing a book together, too, but yeah. I want to ask you a question about your dad. How did he react when you said, I'm getting married? <sighs> well, Henry told him first. My fiancé asked him first if it was okay for him to ask me. And, and, and so when he goes to the president and officially asks for your hand in marriage, that's got to be... your dad. <laughs> I, I mean, I know he, he had worked for your dad and for the party, but still that's got to be intimidating. No, well, he hadn't. I mean, he hasn't worked for my dad in a long time, but he... No, I mean, I think he would do that to anybody who was mm -hmm. marrying. Yeah. Just and do, yeah, do any dads really say no anymore? I'm just curious. Yeah, I, have yeah, I don't know. That's yeah. the thing. I don't know my, if my dad would have said no. Yeah. It's a get, nice anyway. thing because you're it, in love and he wants you to be happy. Did he, get exactly. down on, did he get down on his knee when he spoke to the president? <laughs> hey, Jenna, you once went skydiving <laughs> with my sister. I have to tell you a funny oh, story. I what? You once went skydiving, I think, oh, with my, really? my sister. Yeah. Did you ever go to Paris, California here, and you jumped out of an airplane yes, with your sister? Yes, I did. You were on the plane with my sister. And oh, my, my gosh, how funny. Yeah, and she. I guess one of you asked her, like, because my sister's got, I think, four, 450 yeah. jumps under her. And you guys, it was your first jump. And so then... Um, she said, God, there was a lot of hubbub when we landed, and there were these men running out. She had no idea. She's Canadian. She had no idea who you guys were, but that you were very cool. And Hi guys, this is something I just spotted on the Spanish news. Um, possible proof of reptilians living among us. So I was just watching TV, I had taped it because I went to have a shower, come back and watch it. And I'm looking at this reporter and I noticed something about his eyes at the very last minute. Just when he thinks that the, the broadcast has been completed, we spot something in his eyes. And this is really shocking. I was shocked. I was so happy I taped it because I can go back and pause it and show you. But he blinks and he has a second set of eyes. You're about to see this just at the very end. It's coming up now. We're going to see. We're going to see a second set of eyes. I don't know if this has been caught on TV before. Do you see that? Second set of eyes. I'm going to go back and show it to you. She even looks a little bit shocked, like, what did I just see? I think she saw it too. Here we go. So there it is, the blink. I'm going to do it in slow-mo now. There we go. It's like he had eyes in between. In between those eyelids is another set of eyes. Can you see that? And the whites are bigger. The whites are very big. And you can't say that he had something on his eyelids like makeup or something that would reflect because we get to see what his eyelids look like every time he blinks. There we go. Look at her. She's like, did I just see that? She takes a second. She's like, what was that? So there you go, people. We have reptilians living among us.
dice que has reprobado a Don Felipe. Thanks for watching, guys. We did not get a clarified, clarifying answer on that particular point. Okay, another one. Charles Strange, the father of one of the Navy SEALs, Michael Strange, said he didn't. All right, guys. Dr. Fur has just got exposed. His eyes switch to this weird looking demon eyes. I don't know what it is, reptile, whatever. And I'm a Christian, okay? As you can see, I'm kind of pumped. This is not fake. So just, just look at this, guys. Here's the remote. This is not joking. Dr. Phil has been exposed. Oh. Okay, watch Dr. Phil's eyes. Watch, it's after this girl. That's creepy. See, guys? We're in my house! And I'll pause it, too. I'll pause it. Sorry, guys, my baby brother. You see that, guys? His eyes. Oh, isn't that creepy? Now when we unpause it, changed. He changed. And this guy's being annoying. The uh, the symbol, you know that eye, the eye of Horus with the squiggly hanging out of it. That has to do with lizards. It has. It's a lizard symbol. It means two things. It's a pro lizard symbol, and it also means beware. There's lizards here. Okay. There's three different kinds of lizards. I'll tell you all about them. They're called vril. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order, a world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision the UN's founders.
a popular Islamic preacher, Yusuf Estes, is the founder and host of Guide TV. Interestingly, during one of his services, Yusuf's head briefly transformed into a reptilian looking creature. And I don't do it through debates. I don't need to debate any Christian. I was a Christian. I am a Muslim. If you want, I can give you both sides. Easy. But he will ask you if you delivered the message. I'll play both parts. I'll be the Christian and tell you this, and then I'll be the Muslim and give the answer. You were at a place and you saw somebody change their religion to another religion in the temple of that religion and the father was the priest there, what would you think? What really happened on that Thursday here at Augusta High School that led to Chris Wood's death? that I think are very, as I said, respectful of our teachers, does right by our kids, and is fair to our uh, taxpayers. The issues that remain are minor. The issues that remain are minor. An arbitrary timeline and the best way to
Leuten. Hm, ich weiß, Donald Trump, genau. Das ist doch alles Bullshit. Das ist auch einfach too much. Leute, fallt da bitte nicht drauf rein. Wenn ihr wissen wollt, woher Corona wirklich kommt. I'm about to record this right here. I, I used to hear about everybody talking about that reptilian or whatever that demonic uh, situation is when it comes to uh, celebrities. And if you're selling your soul, whether it's Illuminati or something like that, I heard about it, but I wasn't I wasn't really sure about it. I was kind of skeptical, but I've seen Nicki Minaj and Justin Bieber on YouTube with this type of reptilian uh, situation that goes on. Stephen A. Smith is going to do the same exact thing. If you look close, his eyes is going to change. I'm about to push play right now. Post that on Facebook. No chance. The series won't go past five years. It will be remembered as a Watch Stephen A. Smith's eyes, Rock everybody. The season comes to an end. Stephen A. Smith, many thanks. And we will hear from James Harden here live on this edition of Sports Center. You saw it. Everybody just saw it right there. I'm going to rewind it back again. This is after the loss of Rockets. The after the loss of Rockets. The last game. Failed to show up. They will make shots. And in order for San Antonio to beat them, they're going to have to control pace on defense and make shots on offense. Otherwise, they have no chance. Everybody pay the attention. Won't go past five games. It will be remembered as a stunning night in Houston that I think I want to pause it. Season and I'm, I'm going to see if I can. Comes to and Steve A. Smith, many thanks. And we will hear from James Harden here live on this edition of Sports Center. Okay, I'm going slow. I'm trying to pause it, okay? Work with me. Look at that. Whoa. Everybody see it. His eyes disappear. His another set of eyes came in. Look at that. Everybody can see it. Look at this. Look at this pupil on, this, on the right side. Everybody see this, man. Y'all, I'm freaking out right now. It's for real. I'll push and play. Look, everybody can see it. You tell me. You tell me. Wow. I'll record. Man, I ain't gonna send it back. That's crazy, though. All right, best of third. Друзья, хотелось бы сегодня побеседовать на тему. Можно? Дело в том, что после одной из передач совместно, которую мы снимали вот, с Жанной и с Татьяной, стало очень много обращений ко мне с просьбой, когда мы будем делать совместную передачу и будет присутствовать Жанна, чтобы я ее попросил моргнуть. Ну вот, есть у нас любители Жанна. По просьбе наших друзей. Моргни, пожалуйста. Не, не так. Моргни. Спасибо. Надеюсь, вы довольны. Вы попросили? Извини, продолжаем. Но э, меня также спрашивали вместе с просьбой моргнуть, спрашивали, а много ли у вас здесь на планете Земля? Ответь, пожалуйста. Да, больше, чем вам хотелось бы, но гораздо меньше, чем вы надеетесь. 
теперь теперь люди надеются на то, что внеземной разум, внеземные цивилизации спасут их. Опять вот этот поиск постоянного спасителя. Извини, то мы так, чтобы немножко спрашивали, а много ли вас здесь, на планете Земля? Ответь, пожалуйста. Да, больше, чем вам хотелось бы, но гораздо меньше, чем вы надеетесь. Жизнь моя душевленно. Условия для существования человека — это душа, сознание и Личность. И сознание находится между ними. И смысл как раз — стать живым. И уважаемый Игорь Михайлович Данилов, Здравствуйте. Ну, давайте, прежде чем мы перейдем к озвученной тобой теме, сделаем маленькое отступление для наших друзей, потому что многие наши товарищи будут чувствовать, что с нами присутствует еще один человек, но не видя его в кадре, ну, это может вызывать у них диссонанс. Будет у них простое непонимание. Жан, подойди, пожалуйста. Специально для вас, по вашей просьбе. Показываем, что она с нами. Поздоровайся с нашими друзьями. Здравствуйте. Как видите, Жанна с нами, все нормально, никуда не уехал. Я извиняюсь. Пожалуйста, продолжим. Астрономии и космологии, в частности, о самой яркой звезде созвездия Большого Пса, а звезде Сириус. И вот действительно мы нашли тому много подтверждений и упоминаний. 